TTIP aims to first bring about more choice and better value to customers in a wide range of sectors, contribute to long-term economic growth and job creation, create shared benefits and set new rules for a further global economy, and build a stronger partnership between Europe and the US. The TTIP is going to set the scene for the dec decades to come. And I think, as uh, one of my interlocutors in Commission said the other day, it's either you set the rule or you follow the rule. I think we are here to support us setting the rule together with our American friends. Additional bureaucracy that duplicates the work of businesses where standards are clearly at the same level create unnecessary processes such as dual certification procedures or even duplication of, of production lines. There are obvious gains from addressing these issues, especially for small Maltese businesses with the potential of exporting to the United States and penetrating the market there and increasing their market size beyond, of course, the possibilities of what we have in the European Union. TTIP has the potential to be, bring trade to those who thought it was out of reach. The world is safer when advanced democracies stand together. Building a stronger economic partnership and breaking down barriers will modernize our alliance and make it more secure. If we work at it, if we get it right, TTIP can be an agreement that truly opens markets and liberalizes trade. This would shore up our global competitiveness for the next century and allow us to demonstrate to third countries that this approach, one based on rules, open, free, transparent, and fair competition, is one that delivers benefits for our citizens and could do so for them as well. The popular image, I think, of, of international trade is that it's something that's dominated by, by multinational firms, that, that SMEs don't get a look in. Um, but we know that the reality is, is different to that and more complex. In Europe as a whole, you have about 600,000 SMEs that are exporting outside the EU every year, and that counts, accounts for a, a third of the total value of our exports. We have an opportunity here to shape globalization according to our standards. Because if we consider the growth that is going outside Europe and outside the US, if we don't do it through TTIP, others will do it. In particular China, but not only. So this is also important and it's an important part of this dimension and it's one that concerns SMEs. Compliance and, and regulation are certainly the biggest hurdles for, for new businesses wanting to move into the US. Um, uh, I think other sort of um, problems that we faced, um, let's remember in 2007 when, when we went, went and started investing in the US, there was no double taxation agreement with the US, so taxation was certainly a major concern. Um, since then a double taxation agreement has been signed, but we're still facing withholding taxes um, uh, of around 5%, which, uh, which obviously we'd love to see removed. SMEs uh, need uh, better access to information, better access to market data, better access to the knowledge of the custom duties of all the certification and standards that will apply. Even in the European Parliament, where you have many uh, hesitant uh, people uh, who are not at all convinced of TTIP, you get them on board if you talk about these three points, jobs and growth, EU 2020, internationalization of SMEs. And TTIP is the big free of charge tool to come closer to the achievement of these goals. I think that's a very, very strong selling point for TTIP. We view TTIP particularly positively because of the regulatory convergence opportunity that exists. So instead of having our site subjected to multiple audits by having convergence between the EU authorities and FDA, one can streamline this process significantly. ISDS or similar form of settlement procedure is absolutely necessary. If you're going to have an international investment agreement, you have to have an international disputes mechanism. And it's not something that can be ignored for EU-US because it is a principle. If, it's, if we don't need one in the EU, with the US, why then should we need one with Japan? Why should we need one with China? Why should we need one where we really do need it with countries like Indonesia and Argentina?